<laughs> um, so I've been doing WordPress for a little bit. I'm going to pace a little bit until I get not nervous. And uh, doing WordPress since, I guess, 3.0. Uh, that was after I retired, actually, from Scientific Atlanta, now known as Cisco. And I discovered this cool thing called WordPress because I had to do my own website for my then business, which was digital recruiters for the cable industry. So that's just a little bit more so you know where I'm coming from. When I saw WordPress after doing HTML and uh, what was it, front page? Is that what it was called? Uh, Dreamweaver, such, I guess that's still there. I thought, oh wow, this would be really cool. Plus, I can teach my clients how to use it. So that was what happened and it became ValerieHudgens.com actually. And only a year and a half ago did I incorporate into Zendog Web Services, mostly because my contractors are like, are we gonna make this a business? Or, <laughs> uh, so it's been growing and it's been terrific. And part of that growth has been because I teach WordPress to um, my clients and to people who are not my clients primarily. I'm assuming the folks in this room, let's get a show of hands to find out, are mostly freelancers, whether you're designers or de developers, or you might be agencies, other hand. And okay, so we got a little bit of everything. Um, are there other in there that I don't know of where you're not a, <laughs> you're not a freelancer or you're not an agency? Um, so my hypothesis here is that if you teach WordPress to folks who are not your clients, you are not sabotaging your business if you can include it into your business model. So we're going to go over who, roughly who can teach. That answers anyone if you feel comfortable enough. If you're nervous, you wouldn't be in this room. I mean, I'm nervous, but if you were absolutely against it, you wouldn't be here. What can you teach? That's always going to be something you have to answer. So I tried to make this talk general enough and using percentages enough from my experience so that you can fit it into your business model. So these are the questions that you get to ask yourself and hopefully I will prompt some answers for you. Uh, why are you teaching? A lot of people teach for dollars. Uh, the presentation right before me um, by Zach Skaggs was really great about contributing to CORE by helping to teach WordPress for free um, on the forums and such. So that's another option too. I do not address that in here. Here we're talking about the dollars. So when I say fit into your business model, how many of you are going, business model? What's my business model? Okay, people are smiling. I won't have a show of hands for that. I thought I'd start with the foundational information because as you heard, I have taught small business development for years through Georgia State. And you have to have the foundation. So I want you to have a mission statement whether you're a freelancer, how many folks have a mission statement and know their business model? Yeah, okay, about a third people. Um, and if you're with a company, hopefully you have a business model that you share with everybody, a business, excuse me, a mission statement that you share with folks. And then your business model is going to say how you run your business and how do you create revenue. It's a little more detailed of how that goes in. I'm going to keep this really, again, an overview so you can make it fit into your particular situation. But I did want to give you these two. I don't know if you can see these as well. They're kind of written lightly. Um, FranklinCovey.com has a great way to do a mission statement and it's at msb.franklincovey.com. And also I made you a tiny URL for this one. tinyurl.com slash hbr hyphen biz model. Now that's the Harvard Business School business model, which we're not going to go into today. I actually have done this on mine, last company. Um, but this is pretty interesting if you want to go visit that. Run through all the pieces, it's interactive. We're going to go for the Zendog business model, <laughs> which just states what percentage of your business, of your revenue comes from where. Mine in particular, this is where I start giving you my transparency, start showing you how uh, Zendog works. 25% um, each we get from classes, website creation, consulting, and then the services. 
And I could go into this, but this is not to sell you on me. It's for you to see if this is something that might work for you. The reason this works as a business model is they all flow from one into the other. People are nodding. Okay. Your classes will help get me website creation dollars. Creating a website will get you the consultation. And then almost all of them are going to need services. I decided to start Zendog Web Services a year and a half ago because I saw that there were a lot of freelancers that did not want to mess with <laughs> the maintenance, updating, and security of a website. I'm a geek. I love that stuff. <laughs> so Zendog partnered with SiteGround and Pagely and Security.net. And we sell those services in a package to folks. That's all this ads I'm going to do, but just to let you know that we do that for folks who just would rather design or get on with it. Big question I hear is, wait, but why do I want to teach people about WordPress? Because when I lose money, they're supposed to call me and ask me. You have a finite number of hours in your week, and by dedicating some of that time to teaching people to go into your classes, you are helping yourself stuff the pipeline. So this is why I wanted you to see that it's like a pipeline, has a little gap in the middle, then goes on to something else, which we will talk about. My experience has been in three years of teaching lots of classes, because Zendog we just incorporated like a year and a half ago. But in doing this as a freelancer, I can pretty much state what the percentage of that happens with these folks when you teach a beginning WordPress class. So consider this and see if it's something for you. 25% of the people that take your class will come to it, they pay you money, and they're gone forever. <laughs> this, you think they're gone forever, but over the three years I've seen, they will give you referrals. They may have decided not to do this venture they, for whatever reason. We won't spend much time on the gone forever folks. The next ones, Take a look at the class, see all the stuff you have to teach them and go, oh my God, just do my website for me, please. And we all know how that is. You have now another group of people from whom you may not have you know, run into before that are doing your website because they see your expertise and because they trust you. The next 25% are do-it-yourselfers. These are the people we're targeting. You are teaching them what you know about WordPress, be it design, development, or maybe just the how-to of the back end, however you design your class. Remember, this is going to be an overview. You figure out what you need to teach. But realize 25% of these DIYers are going to take you to heart, and they're going to go off and do their stuff. The great thing about it is they come back. My last advanced class, Every one of the people, uh, of the 10 people, I would say eight of the 10 had all taken my beginner's class over at some point during the previous two years. And they came back for the advanced class, which also cost two and a half times the price. So additional services too. They'll be coming back to you saying, you know, I've had my website for a couple years. I did it myself, thanks to you. And I've used you a little bit for consulting, but I need a new update. Let's do something about that. So you're stuffing your pipeline. The last quarter, I found, returns later. These people may go off into the weeds. They may, you may not hear about them. But just so you know, if you can divide it up to 25%, you make the determination as to whether or not you think it's worth it to you to do a WordPress class and stuff your pipeline and get this, this type of results. Because I would say over dozens of classes, this 25% is uh, accurate for me. Any questions so far about stuffing the pipeline? I didn't want to be too, okay, onward. So this is why we do it. How do you do it? Learn WordPress deeply. Okay, come on, you got to know where that's from. Uh, it's not JavaScript. You, you may want to teach JavaScript. That's up to you, but uh, deeply. So in teaching your class, ask yourself, say, I need to know my stuff. Decide what you're going to teach and offer, how it fits in with what you're doing. If you're a designer, you may want to do 
teach that to these folks. I know a lot of folks who are DIY, DIYers that would love to have that angle. I don't teach them that. I just give them the basics. I'll show you that in a minute, what I do. Advertise to the right audience. That's important. Even though you know WordPress or your aspect of WordPress, make sure you are advertising it to the people who want to learn from your brain. Um, as you'll see in a little bit, I started a class just to jump into the water for seniors. I happened to be taking care of elderly folks at the time and I was always at the senior center and so I thought, you know, these people could use a class. <laughs> I need something to do, it's kind of boring around here. Um, so they said, we'd love to have you teach a class on blogging. That's how I dipped my toe into the water. Uh, don't think I'll be doing that again, but it was interesting. <laughs> it was interesting and out of it came uh, a book, ebook called My Grandma Can Blog and So Can You. <laughs> Out of print now, you can't get that. So advertise to the right audience. Plan, 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 of course. You have to plan for your disasters when you're doing a class. Um, <laughs> notice I had two adapters when we needed them here, but that would have been nice. I'm gonna go purchase one next. Who uses VGA? Okay, um, let's see. That means plan everything from having an extra monitor in your room, in your, trunk, wherever, uh, something else that might happen, it might rain, people might show up. Just think of all the alternatives and plan for that because when you do a number of classes, these things are going to happen. And then do the fun stuff too. We did everything from sharing cherry cheesecake because one of the uh, clients had a bakery and of course she's got to bring that in, right? And anything you can think to make it fun for your group. Uh, my classes that I taught, as you'll see in a little bit, were all between six and ten people. That seemed to be my sweet spot. I've spoken to people, but not doing a WordPress teaching class for more than that. But that's a little different. You can't, I think you need to teach closer to one-on-one. -on -one. And six to ten people worked for me. Um, also do the follow-up. My goodness, if you got all these people in here, don't forget to get their email addresses. Get their information so you can contact them and then do your follow-up. Uh, I did a newsletter for every one of my classes and kept them separately for a while. Then I realized this is getting to be too much. And now it's the Zendog newsletter. So this is stuff I've tried. I put the blogging for seniors in black. But uh, that was kind of fun, but then I didn't know I was going to end up teaching people, some people, what cut and paste is on a computer. Um, so that, <laughs> that was a little different. Again, I learned about my audience. Um, but they did walk away with the blog, and some of these grandmothers loved it. They were talking about their gardening. Their grandkids were writing them notes saying, Grandma's got a blog. So, and I'm still in touch with a number of them. Also tried another thing that kind of bombed. A uh, friend and I did one in Orlando with, hey, bring a laptop and your credit card and you will walk out with a website or a blog. That actually could have worked if I decided to pursue it, but I kind of felt like a snake oil salesman. <laughs> um, like, yeah, and the credit card wasn't for me as much as you have to have a credit card or you have to buy your domain, as you know, when you're setting it up. And so while we're setting that up, we're buying web hosting. Affiliate links are your friend. And that was good for a one class. And I'm still in touch with those folks that we have done that with. But for 35 bucks, we got in a bunch of folks and just kind of did like a support thing. And uh, hey, it was Orlando, it was fun, couldn't go wrong. Uh, but it was, again, a little creepy. Uh, next, in the hearts, you'll see, I ended up doing a WordPress walkthrough for beginners. And I thought I had one of my uh, <coughs> books left, but I didn't from most recent class, sorry about that. And they're kind of expensive to print, which we'll talk about when we get into the revenue here. Um, I realized that people don't need to walk in to teach WordPress or, and be taught WordPress with their laptop because there's a lot you're going to go through that you need to know before you even get, heads are nodding again, before you get to sign up as a domain name. You might have your domain name already, you might have your web hosting set up already. But as soon as you start installing that WordPress, it's going to ask you things. Do you know to go turn off the uh, search engines under 
settings reading first time so that you don't have to let the Google bot see your computer, see your new website until you're ready. Uh, have a list of 10 things you should do beforehand. So I realized this is like a WordPress walkthrough. So my workbook became a WordPress walkthrough and it was a three hour class and it always sold out and I did it, have been doing it for years, still do. It also leads to advanced WordPress seminar, which is so fun. Well, those of you who have been in it, raise your hand. No. <laughs> um, and that was a fun thing because these are my DIY people that had been doing WordPress. I did make it so that they had to have been there a year. Again, know your audience and qualify them. So if you want to say you have to have had your website for a year, if you feel that that's what you need. And that was helpful for me. I also spoke to every single person, as I still do in the WordPress beginners, speak to every person, call them up once they register through PayPal, and say, let me get your situation. What's going on here? And then you can field and say, you know what? You need WordPress.com. <laughs> Happens sometimes. And then there's some people say, whoa, you need a full-blown e-commerce site, and this beginning class is not for you. OK? So you will hone your applicants, let's call them people that are telling you they want to be in your class. And don't be afraid to refund the money if it's not somebody who should be in your beginning class. You will get a better class if you do it ahead of time, talk to each one and say, wow, this group of six is going to rock this weekend. I'm going to talk to them about this and they're going to have, have some synergy going on. And then you'll be excited about it too and teach them the WordPress they need to know. Any questions so far on that? Uh, the advanced seminar, by the way, had um, three speakers. And I hired um, Gary Parks, who does my uh, social media for my clients, and uh, Jenny Munn, who we all know for SEO. Yay! And they both spoke. And it was an all-day class, gave everybody lunch. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. Where did you what after? Where, where did you go after that with, with that class? Because that's an introduction. Yes, and that's an introduction to doing it, but they should be able to walk away and go do it at home. I gave everybody also a one hour talk to me, and almost everybody would take me up on it at some point in the next six months. Sometimes they're like, wow, I did this site, and I followed all your directions, and I've got it, it's great, but I want something more now. How do I change my theme to make it look coolly cool? And they, they learn how to change their theme in that intro class too. But they don't learn page builders. You know, they don't do that advanced kind of things. Um, a lot of that led to one-on-one -on -one consulting. So that's, does that answer your question? I kind of shake, shepherd them, but then you start getting a couple hundred, so you kind of got to stick them in the newsletter route. <laughs> so I thought I'd put up what others have tried and that this seems to be a natural progression because I did a little bit of research for this to determine what order of teaching some of the rock stars of WordPress were in. They start with beginning classes, go to the one-on-one -on -one classes, and then sometimes have to have a membership newsletter or might just jump to membership with video. <coughs> Lastly, I see podcasting because the two examples I'm about to give you, who you may recognize, yay, uh, both decided not to do the video and went back into podcasting, which is an audio only. You can do video podcasting, though. Um, this, if you don't recognize them, then I will tell you who they are. Uh, Bob Dunn of BobWP.com has been doing lots of courses. He's in Seattle, and I follow his blog and such, and he's recently announced on the Dradcast, I'm throwing out a lot of WordPress stuff that you may or may not know, listen to the Dradcast, it's a podcast, it's craziness, um, and he was interviewed recently and announced that he's going to be moving away from his membership with video, but doing membership and podcasting. <coughs> so he had gone through this whole cycle we talked about. Carrie Dills, everybody knows from Genesis, if you are a Genesis framework person. You got to know Carrie. She teaches WordPress. She's also at CarrieDills.com. That's one L. I uh, really <laughs> admire her. And she has done the same things also. She also has a podcasting, but theirs is more of a radio format. Forgotten the name of it right now. Sorry, Carrie. 
Um, so this is something other folks have tried, but it seems to be the natural progression. So if you're thinking of adding WordPress, you might want to follow this. You may want to jump <coughs> into one right away. Questions so far? So yes, ma'am. That's okay. So That's going to be up to you. Okay. Um, I don't know. I don't think either of these are. I, I know Bob's is paid for his VIP membership, um, one of them. So that's going to be up to you. How does that work, membership? I don't have membership right now, thinking about it real strong, but I'm in that progression also. Does that kind of answer your question? So I hate to say I don't know, but I don't know exactly. You could look. It's individual for everybody. Mm -hmm. blogging type gurus, that's what they do, they, they you know, launch their webinar and then after the webinar it's like, well, for $1,200 you can get the next thing and I'm wondering, yeah. you know, is that the way to go? <coughs> well, know. with t this is whether or not you should teach WordPress. I don't know if I can tell you that far into the crystal ball future uh, about what you want to do, but you can look up and see what the other folks have done. Yeah, I, I know there are a few folks that do that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they've all started teaching WordPress. Some of them just jump in with entrepreneurial things, and then they give you their course. Yes? I know Carrie's is free, and then once she started doing all that, now she teaches and gets one of the premier ones on Linda. Yes, forgot about that. Yeah, Carrie started teaching on Linda.com. If you know Linda.com, that's... And again, if you see how these work, I should probably go back. I'm afraid to do that. Um, <laughs> Um, there's a progression, and it tends to be to a wider audience. I don't know how to do that. I'm not going to do it. Um, meaning you start one-on-one -on -one or with six or ten people, and then you realize, I could do the same thing and be videoed and talk to people. It's not the same experience, and there will always be people who want to be taught one-on-one. -on -one. So that's... A money maker right there and then plus this WordPress wave is a tsunami so you can either ride it or tread water and let it pass you by <coughs> but the pie is getting bigger so don't feel like you're in super competition with folks at this point I've seen this in a few industries <laughs> hopefully it will always stay that way the pie is infinite right <laughs> let's go on so um, here are, <laughs> we have geeks in the room. Let's see. <laughs> things you're going to say, I can't teach. Yes, you can. Just think about these things. Just start with a small class. Um, <coughs> enlist helpful people. Teach what you know and figure out how can I teach a particular audience something that they want to know. Um, try teaching at the library. Um, Zach mentioned that too. Libraries are always free. I started off with that. It has to be free in some cases. So it doesn't, I mean, it might behoove you to try a free class at the library. First time I tried a free class at the library, though, wait a minute, is a um, giant room and they wanted to fill the room. And you can't teach WordPress that closely with, if you realize they're going to put 40 people in it. And they said, well, it's free, and this is our policy. You have, I said, can I get a smaller room? I'm like, oh, sure. Thank you. <laughs> so I got a smaller room for 15, 20 people, but that was a lot of folks to do it, and that's why we took it down. I've tried that huge room. That's not good quality. Uh, it's free, so, you know, you can rationalize it that way, but I was out to make dollars on it. You can also write an instructional ebook. This is still teaching, and it's making something available. Also, teach in a different city if you're scared. I did that. <laughs> I've since also decided, I think we need to have a WordPress seminar in Jekyll Island. So I did that too. That was fun. Um, next, I think we need one in Michigan. I need to go visit my relatives. So, <laughs> hey, it's your business. Make it as portable as you want. Okay, now here's where we get even more transparent. And it's already 1130, so we're going to go kind of fast. Um, sample costs to think about. And yes, up in the corner is my second or third book, far left. Uh, 
that's not the one with the picture of Granny Ruth on it, but it was really bad. I didn't even have graphic artists with me at that time. Um, and then this is the intermediate seminar, just kind of background. Room rental would go, you can read this, but I started out as, you can do free, but with our advanced class, I really wanted the $180 a day, which was really pretty good, given what some things are. Had a great kitchen, great place to sit, and a receptionist that really helped a lot of things. So that was terrific. Uh, didn't make as much money off of that one as I would have because I paid extra to make sure it was going to be great. Um, workbook printing is still killing me because I'm kind of a perfectionist in documentation and I want it to all be the latest and greatest and I want it in color and so therefore you're going to spend 11 bucks a book to $18. But if you do it ahead of time, you know, you can get it a little less expensive and you know, watch your prices and such. These are hard copies that I do and I bind them so that they can open them flat and follow along. That's how I run my WordPress work workshop. Advertising. I have tried everything from a 50% of the take to a $200 ad in the paper. It's wrong spacing. The ad in the paper didn't work. Free worked. The 50% take I actually did for a while because where I was teaching it at the bookshop, this woman had a mailing list of 7,000 people and I filled up all my classes. But she wanted a pretty penny for it and that's okay. So it worked out. Uh, then I moved onto free and still had that pipeline stuffing, so it was great. Uh, guest speakers, I have paid them an honorarium. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hope I can continue to do that. Food, please don't skip on the food when you have a class. You know how you go in a class and they don't even have coffee or donuts? Hello. Is it just me? I want food. Um, we also gave them, <laughs> pardon? <coughs> gave them lunch. Uh, $10 per person ended up going to which which or not going there, having them brought in. It worked out great. I'm sorry, you had a question? Uh, just so I was wondering what an example of the free advertising. Uh, free advertising, I'm sorry, meant was more word of mouth. And that was, again, after your <coughs> pipeline got stuffed. Um, it was just people referring, saying, oh, you need to go take her class. And because it was consistent and it was always once a quarter or once a month in that particular place, people kind of knew to have it. And they also knew that we'd serve cheesecake because the bakery lady continued to bring us cheesecake every class. Um, hey, it was her advertising. You know, she brings us free cheesecake and everybody's like, ooh, and now they're buying her stuff online, which she made her website with WordPress. Um, uh, what is it? Somebody bakes, KY bakes. Trying to give you a plug there, but I can't think of it right now. All right, so this is the sample costs. My sample charges, just so you'll know, because we're doing, is um, my sweet spot tend to be $120 for three hours for that WordPress walkthrough. Some of you will think that's not very expensive. It seemed to work for me. Some people might think it's high. This is going to be six people in there, so you can do the math. Uh, not bad for a Saturday afternoon, and I get to teach what I love. The advanced seminar had three speakers. Yes, sir? Yeah, it's $120, $120 for three hours, but I only like to have six people. Um, the bookshop owner really liked to pack it in because she was getting 50% of my take at that time, and so she would have Sometimes I would have eight people, and I'm like, okay. But I felt I couldn't do quite the good job, and I had set up for six. Um, but again, I called everybody ahead of time. And then sometimes people will bring a friend, <laughs> like, but they're going to pay for them, but you're still going, oh, okay. So be prepared for that. Yes, sir? Are you doing hands-on? And if so, how are you working the hands-on into this? Okay, um, hands-on. No, this was a workbook walkthrough. I have, would have a setup. And I had a big monitor so that they could see what I was walking through. And we worked th walked through the WordPress dashboard. Am I answering your question? Is this what you mean? OK. They're not connected. They're not doing No. Anything. They are welcome to bring their laptop. And I always make sure we have Wi-Fi. And if they want to set it up, and technically you could, as we walk through it, do every one of this, because I, every one of those steps. I taught them about domains, web hosting, give them my affiliate links, and then um, marched forth with that. 
So it was hands-on to some degree, but mostly I'm having them write in their workbook what their answers are, because most people are not ready to start their don't. They think they are. They're not ready to start their website. You have them walk through it and tell them what categories do you think you might have and make them write that down. What domain names are you thinking about? And they have to go home and check. It's a, there's a lot of research to doing it correctly. Did that answer your question? What about the advanced courses? Uh, the advanced was not um, hands-on in that respect. We had speakers about SEO, speakers about social media, uh, and security, and I'm forgetting what the fourth one was. <laughs> four different topics, two before lunch and two after lunch. And uh, that was great. I plan to do another one of those in May, I think the 28th. It's on the website. Okay, let me make sure. I think we have one more slide and then we'll get to the end of the questions if that's all right. So final thoughts, know your business model. Think synergy with what you're already doing. Start small if you, I recommend it, but that's up to you. Minimize the trolls by pre-screening. They are always out there, and some of them just want to show up and give you grief. But you get to talk to each one of them, and you'll know. Um, get feedback and help from the WordPress community, because that's really helpful. This is a great community we have here at WordPress. And ask folks. Um, and then capture contact info for the future, because I still know so many of those people, and they're still bringing me clients. Matter of fact, one in, example I wanted to use, um, two of my $5,000 plus e-commerce sites that I've done, or we're starting this month, came from a gentleman who was in my very first class. And he made his own website, but he just wanted it as some sort of credibility authority, went to work for a marketing company and sends me people. Love that. <laughs> Thank you, John. Have fun. That's another good one. Okay, that's all I have. I saw a bunch of questions. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip over you and do her because she's had her hand up longer. Yes, ma'am? I was just wanting to follow up on this question of the, the model that you have for the walkthrough. You also mentioned another one that, the other one that you did when you bring the credit card, you walk out with the Oh, yeah, I did that. That was an experiment, but yeah. <laughs> um, the, the, it wasn't a walkthrough, it was how it differed. I thought maybe I could do that. Wow. I had help with that. There were two of us doing it. And so we actually were, do, it was more like a tech support happiness bar thing, walking around just helping people do it. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Did you charge, um, I did not charge near enough for that pain. <laughs> Uh, and I won't be doing that again. It was kind of cool, but yeah. Well, you you live and learn. I'm just bearing my soul here and telling you that this well, is the way I went. It was interesting. What did you have a question? Yeah. Oh, you did. Uh -huh. It does, and at 90 bucks an hour for consulting, I will happily do that for them. And they almost all, not almost all, just the 25%, go by that, because it really did. But that was very helpful. And, um, you know, so far so good. Yes, ma'am? Um, I guess I have a two-part question. Do you find that the advertise different for the beginner's classes to the advanced classes, or is it the same type of advertising? Yeah. I would say I tried to do more to get more of an advance, but I think it's all about that stuffing the pipeline. The beginner folks came in, I knew who they were, and like I say, eight of the ten folks had been in my beginner's classes within the last two years, so I knew them. I helped them build their websites in some cases, and then it was just a natural flow for them into the advanced classes. I wanted to have more from outside. And that's where I tried the advertising in the paper. I tried a um, couple things. Didn't get anybody from any of those things. So I realized, for me, I need to farm it, keep these beginners coming in, love them dearly, and then move them to the next thing. So Have it's. You ever online? I mean, online online? No, wouldn't that be great? Might do that. See, that's another one of those video online things. You can do webinars and such too. I'm, I didn't address that. Shh, don't tell. <laughs> I have a big screen behind me. It hides my stuff. Um, back to the question about um, the failed experience. 
Um, the whole concept. No, let's see. <laughs> it was probably too hastily put together. It was with a friend and we thought, we can do this. And we did. And it worked out. Like, I don't, let's not call it a failure. It just was not something I would want to continue. Like I said, I felt like I was selling snake oil a little bit because it was a little too rushed. And I didn't know to qualify everybody at the beginning. Um, that was a few years ago, I'm trying to remember what else. That's all I can think. Maybe talk to me afterwards and I can think of some more. <laughs> yes, ma'am. How do you qualify? Oh, just talk to them and you will know. Call them up and say, hi, I understand you're going to be taking this class. And as soon as they say, yes, I have my website that my son did for me and it's on WordPress.com, you realize, hmm, we are really need to move to this. So she might be, whoever you're talking to is probably your person because it's beginning. They think they know more than they do because they're on WordPress.com, but they didn't, .com, but they didn't do it. I'm talking about WordPress.org here, obviously. Um, just talk to them and see where they are. Um, had one gentleman at the advanced class who said, I want to come in there and do this, but I want my company to pay for it. And they will, but I want to learn to do it on my own for my own website. And I thought, okay, that's your deal. Up to you. Um, but, you know, you at least know where they're coming from. So you can find out how, because he wasn't really advanced, because he was really starting from the beginning. But I think his company thought it was, and it looked good, and, you know, whatever. Expense report. You had a question, too. I'm sorry. Thank you. Was that the same thing? How do you qualify him? Did that answer your question? Talk to him on the phone. Sir. Uh, I'm sorry I came in a few minutes late. Are you putting your slide presentation on the Slack channel? I understand you can do that, and as soon as I know how to, I will do it. Thanks. Sir, on your, I think uh, I skipped you. Sorry. I've done the hands-on and stuff, too, mm -hmm. so I've been there and done that. I appreciate it. Sorry about that. Uh, you mentioned on your advanced, but you said it's advanced WordPress, but you talk more about SEO, social media, and security mm -hmm. versus... Yeah, it wasn't advanced WordPress. It was taking your we uh, website. Well, I have it up there. It was take your website to the next level. Okay. What else do you need after you have all of that WordPress? They don't need to more need to know more widgets or more page builders. They've got their website. Their business is rocking. They need to know. Let's tweak the SEO. Let's find out what can I do in social media. I sold a lot of newsletters that week. My VA was there, and she got some business too. Um, because these companies were growing and they needed that. Does that so, answer your so question? Wait, so okay. you don't, so you've got the walkthrough, but you don't have one where you I don't have one really in between. between. And, in between is the consulting and uh, so let's have Zendog make the website for you if we need. We'll hire the designers to do that. So, 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 you don't, so instead of them trying to put them in a class, because everybody's got a different need. No, I don't teach exclusively. Only 25% of my business comes from class. I, I needed you to do a website for you, baby. Um, and we're trying to specialize in e-commerce, too. So I'm going to WooConf. Anybody else going to WooConf in Austin? Oh, yeah. Okay. A few of us. I'm sorry, ma'am. <laughs> you have been, been patient. Um, how did you make the transition when you started with your free classes to doing paid classes? Oh, that was easy. <laughs> you tell them you're charging money. Let's see. And how did they take that? Her question. Well, they're different people. The question was, how do you go from your free to not? So I think once you do a free something and you see that, I got this. These people love me. They're giving me good reviews. Or maybe, oh, I should have done that better. I could have done this. You gather that information and you go on to the next step. And you tell people, I'm a geek. I've been doing this for a long time. I also teach. I feel comfortable. Come to me and I will help you. <laughs> Give me money first. <laughs> then, um, the part two to that was, how did you go about securing your guest speakers? Oh, let's see, guest speakers. <laughs> I was at a word camp in Birmingham or Atlanta, saw Jenny Munn speaking on SEO, which I think she is doing, and I didn't know her then, mm -hmm. uh, so two years ago. And I went up to her afterwards and said, would you please speak at my advanced class? I didn't have an advanced class yet. <laughs> I said, would you please do this? She goes, well, let's trade cards and we can talk. So I kind of did that. And also the gentleman who does social media for me and a bunch of several of my clients was already great. I just had to ask him to do it. 
and um, he was so much better than I thought. I was a little worried about him doing it because he's a very laid back kind of guy. I mean, works in the pajamas idea, you know, does SEO. It's quarter of, I have one minute left. Um, that I thought, oh, I hope he can handle this. Oh my gosh, they asked him to continue speaking through lunch. So here I rented this place with this big, beautiful place you can sit and I thought we'd all talk in the kitchen and have people take it. Everybody wanted to sit at their desk and eat their sandwiches and listen to Gary talk. <laughs> so that was different, but we ran with it and um, he got quite a bit of business out of that too. Hey. One what? other comment that I've got in terms of advertising, how to get people. Um, I'm out of Fairhope, Alabama, and they have a program mm -hmm. through the library called East, Eastern Shore Learning. And mm. they, you go in and say, hey, I'd like to teach a class for this, and they do all the publicity. Uh -huh. It's very well recognized in the community. Everybody okay. looks for the ESOL schedule when it comes out. And, and you can teach that, too. From, I mean, you can charge right. whatever you want. Mm -hmm. ESOL well. is one in Alabama, and Ollie is another here in Atlanta. If you know Ollie, it's through Kennesaw State, because that's through university also, isn't it? No, Easel? it's just through no? the library. The library. Oh, okay, and through the library. Um, Ali, O-L-L-I, and it's through, it's online something or other learning. I'm sorry, I don't remember what it stands for, but it's through Kennesaw State. And um, I looked into teaching on something like that, uh, but they wanted to give me the curriculum. Not going to happen. So, they wanted to tell me what to teach. Online, I have a place at the bottom of my landing page. You're good. <laughs> uh, I move. He's good. Uh, that where it's a PayPal, and it takes the entire portion up front. And I have my little notes that you know, if you cancel within a couple days, I don't know what it is. So you send them to your page when they sign up. The yeah, there's a landing page. Um, I don't think I have it up now because I don't have the class ready to go. But it comes and goes, and then. Um, yeah, just goes, dumps into your PayPal. Easy. And then also some people call me and say, can I give you a check at the time? Or, you know, that's up to you. All my folks have been great, though. Yes, ma'am? Oh, you said you do, you do websites also. Do you teach to the people that you build the websites for? Do you, do you ever have them ask you to learn how to do the website, too? Uh, that's kind of the teaching is, you mean, if they already have a website? No, if you're doing the website for them. Okay. And then they say, well, I want to learn how to do websites. All righty. Good question. In all of my proposals, I, well, of course, at the discovery, I find out how much, how hands-on do you want to be, the client. Some of them are like, no, just get away, get it away. Make it send me money. Some people want to be hands-on or at least know what's going on. And I'm happy to teach them. That way, I usually put it in the proposal that I will give you one to two hours with some of your staff to teach you the back end of your WordPress. <coughs> Excuse me about that. Did that help answer your question? Okay. Mm -hmm. Sir? Have you tried a money back guarantee or done that? I haven't done a money back guarantee. Haven't had anybody give me less than 10 stars. No, 10 out of 10. <laughs> Sorry, it's fresh books I use too. So, you know, you get the little squirrel. What do you think? <laughs> 10 out of 10. Um, haven't had to do that. If somebody had a problem, I'm sure we'd come to an agreement. <coughs> Sir, ma'am. Um, you mentioned um, with your speakers you work with on honorarium. Uh, yes, I've been lucky with that so far. <laughs> Jenny Munn's prices just went up, I can tell. <laughs> so what does that mean, though? I mean, so that means I give them a thank you amount in a check. Okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Do speakers ever even have an amount to uh, Sometimes they will tell me. And I will make sure it's at least that. Did you have a question too? I was going to ask you what was the was a good range for an honorarium? honorarium? Um, a hundred to two hundred dollars is what I've paid. Thank you. Ish. So oh yeah, I did kind of bear it all, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, sir. How do you have handle the lunch? I assume you typically roll that for the price of that. Yeah, I add the lunch into that. You have to add it all in and um, I actually had my VA do that she just looked for them and found which which and they delivered it gosh have everything delivered you're gonna be so nervous when you do an advanced class beginners classes I can do in my sleep I just grab my what I know I need and go but the advanced classes take a lot of course they're paying more money too 
Um, did that answer your question? Just sure try to. More people in the band class. Uh, I did. Yes, I had ten people in More the class. And small yes, mm -hmm. and that's why I wanted to rent a bigger room, nicer place. You're going to be in it all day. Better have comfy seats. Better have bathrooms, and then use all that. I use signage too. I had Zen Dog on each of the places to help people where to go. My little Zen Dog. Sir, you, had a, you mentioned the workbook on the beginners. Do you have a workbook on the advanced too? You know? No, I did not. I did um, actual books that other people have written, and um, things I liked. David Merman Scott's "The New Rules of Thank You of Marketing and PR" uh, is a great book. I actually bought a case of those books and I gave them out. Um, things like that. Ma'am? Um, <coughs> do you have a copy of your work workbook online? I did. I don't know. Right. It changes, remember, because I keep up with the WordPress 4.0, so, so this newest one. Uh, I actually put it. Oh, that's another good thing to have you do. When you do the word book, put a code in it, even if you're not going to use it. On the back page of every one of my workbooks is a code, and that lets me know what class they were in, how many years ago it was. So now when I build a new landing page for an advanced class and if I say, hey, if you were in this class, instead of getting it for 225, you get it for 200 bucks, enter your code from your workbook. Now granted, some people forget it, but I wrote on there or email me, I'll look it up. How just do you give go them. about um, putting it together? Because I'm just trying to pick your brain as far as putting together a <laughs> Yeah, that, since we're 10 of and I'm supposed to have stopped five minutes ago, I didn't know it's going to get this <laughs> great attention. Thank you very much. Um, so let's talk about that, but it's a Word doc, <laughs> print it out, you know, make it into a PDF, the usual way. I was in documentation for years too, so I wanted to make it pretty. Thank you folks for listening. I hope it helped you learn something.